In this video, we're going to see how we can use zero delay feedback filters, also known as topology preserving transform filters from Max MSP, Rainbow and Gen, and bring those into highs and use them fully polyphonically. Now these filters have been rather fashionable for the last 10 years or so in synthesis. They really are an extension of traditional DSP filter design, but using some interesting tricks. And they sound quite peachy, uh, they're very good for synth applications. This is the white paper, the RFA filter design by Vadim Zavlishin, who works in Native Instruments and is part of the Reactor development team. So the big contribution to this filter design was really to take an analog model and then use a clever piece of algebraic manipulation to move this into a new space using some different types of factor. So this paper is a little bit full on, it's kind of a heavy read. Don't be afraid of any of the mathematics in here. But we can see how these filters can be used to sound a little bit more like a real analog filter. It's worth noting these filters aren't really discrete circuit modeling by the likes of universal audio waves. However, they are actually quite peachy and sound quite good. So I'll put this link into the comments below so you can see a little bit more about the theory. There's also a great article here from Urs Heckman who runs UHE in Berlin, which is a great synthesizer plug-in manufacturer. And this gives us an overview of some of the method of the zero delay filter methodology. It's a little bit easier to understand this one than the previous link, but these filters have been used a lot in many sort of interesting synth plugins. For example, there's lots of Max for Live devices that feature this. This is the dark synth from Amazing Noises on the Ableton webshop. This has got a couple of interesting zero delay feedback filters inside it. In fact, the zero delay feedback filter stuff is quite common across the Max landscape. So you could Google around the Cycling 74 forums and find examples of these patches. Here's a great example from Ollie Larkin, who now works at Ableton with various different model designs that he's done based on some of this theory. So there is quite a few zero delay feedback filters available in the Max MSP landscape. You can Google for some more. The one we're gonna have a look at here is one based on Ollie's interpretation of this diode ladder. So this is actually an emulation of the Roland CB303 filter and the uh, EMS VCS3 filter. It's a four pole diode ladder. Sounds a bit different from the Mini Moog that has a four pole transistor ladder. The TB303 is quite famous for having a very squelchy filter. Um, it's actually a four pole, but it operates a bit more like a three pole. So it's really 24 dB, but it has a bit more frequency responses to uh, an 18 dB. So these filters are actually really, really interesting and sound much more peachy than what we might be used to with filters in the digital landscape. As we can see, the code is a little bit hairy, but we're not really gonna to be too worried about understanding the algebraic manipulation of some of these lines of code. We can just stick these into Gen and Rainbow, export them and put them in highs. So the main reason I wanted to make this video is because recently Christoph was nice enough to add some hard-coded polyphonic effects modulation elements in one of the dev branches of highs. So we've now got a way to add some poly modulation into sort of some of our hard-coded poly effects which means we can use these filters with true polyphony. So I did promise Christoph that after we did this, I'd make these free tutorials, but I'll stick this link up if you're interested in the read. We are gonna to have to be using a certain version of highs from the dev branch that allows us to have our hard-coded poly effects activated by some pre-processor definitions. So let's jump into Max and have a look. So here we are in Max MSP. I've got a little example for you so you can hear the difference. So I'll make this patch available to you as a download. We've got over here a drum loop. So we're gonna trigger our drum loop and now we're gonna come over and make sure we're gonna route the drum loop as our input source in our little drop down menu here. That is now being passed over to our rainbow diode filter and also the standard Max state variable filter, which is using the more traditional filter DSP methodology. So to audition this, we just gotta choose our filter. So let's go to the SVF. This is the standard Max MSP filter. That's a usual, typical digital filter using the bilinear transform. It's you know standard DSP. So let's have a quick listen to this and see if we can hear how this filter works. So it does self-resonate. 
But yeah, pretty much a standard digital filter from the DSP landscape. The sort of thing you'll probably find inside a stock plug-in for a door or maybe on a digital mixing console. Let's move over to our diode, which is running in Rainbow as a gem patch. So let's crank up our gain and we'll see the filter really squeals when it starts to self-resonate. So it also has a bit more of a crunchy element to it. And let's push it up, it's gonna get a bit squealy now, so watch your headphones. So we push it right to the point of self-resonance. So quite a nice, more musical result than the standard SVF. Nice, so let's have a look at the patch. We're gonna go inside our little rainbow patch here and we can see this is our little rig. So we've actually got the parameters coming in. Over here on the right hand side, we're actually having to calculate coefficients based on the resonance parameter. Most filters would calculate the coefficients for the filter that produced the output based on the user's requirements of cutoff and resonance. So we're actually calculating here the A and K coefficients using these little bits of rainbow math. And these are all fed in with the audio and the cutoff frequency value into our gen object. So we've got a left and right hand side here. It's both exactly the same code duplicated, one for the left channel, one for the right channel. So the code block itself is actually only really operating mono. So let's go into our gen diode thing. Here we can see we've opened up the gen patch. So here's the code we saw earlier from the website, which has been moved over into the gen environment by Oli. Uh, I've tidied it up a little bit, added some different comments in here for us. We can see here really that, you know, the core of this is to calculate all of these different coefficients amounts for various different stages in the ladder. And you can see the reason the TB303 was quite interesting in terms of analog circuitry was the way the coupling of the diodes worked, which gave it its unique feel. So this is sort of the main part of the code block. And it's a zero delay feedback, so it's actually using a couple of delay states. It's you know a bit of a misnomer, really. Zero delay feedbacks do actually have little delay lines in them, but the delay lines are usually one sample. A typical digital filter actually uses delay lines of more than one sample to provide the filtering. Technically, a digital filter is a sum of shifted impulse units, which are really delay lines in the sample landscape. So this filter looks a bit hairy, but you know again we can. Utilize the code for Rainbow. You can find other examples of de zero delay feedback online and maybe patch those into some sort of code block like this. And we're kicking the output back from Gen through into our Rainbow patch, which we can compile. Now this filter actually is requiring a specific de-warping setting here because we're not really gonna be running this with oversampling. We could do that if we stayed in the max domain, but for now we're gonna use this particular line, which was um, operating here is uncommented because we're not actually going to be running the output of this through a polyphonic object in Max for oversampling. So that's quite an important thing to realize if you want to play with this code. So as we might have seen from a previous bunch of videos I've made, it's quite easy to export stuff in the Rainbow domain. So here's our main Rainbow patch, and let's see how we can actually export this code as a C++ source and bring that into highs. So we're inside our rainbow patch and all we need to do is open up the toolbar on the right hand side for the export and we're actually going to come back to the main window here and make sure we can see source code export for C++. So we're going to export it as C++ code. Let's click through for that. Next up we're going to have to configure some of our properties. This is very similar to a previous video I made earlier that shows you exporting rainbow into highs. So let's choose a location for our output directory. I'm gonna place this into the folder next to my max patch in a folder called C++, that's our destination. We've got an export name diode. This needs to be exactly the same name for the export parameter here as the class name. So we're gonna make sure they're exactly the same. And the important thing here is to disable any polyphony provided from Rainbow. Highs is gonna handle that for us. So we can click the export button in the bottom right hand corner. This will be super quick because we're not really using a cloud-based interpreter from Cycling74 for this. We're using the C++ root export and we'll see it's done.
So super easy, let's come back to our desktop and we'll see in our folder now, we've got a bunch of stuff here which we can now move over to highs. So the entire contents of our C++ folder needs to be copied. Let's put that in our buffer. And we'll come back to my highs project I've prepared as a little example for us here. And we're gonna move into the DSP networks folder. This is a standard highs project that's been created just to be able to import our code into. In the DSP networks folder, we've got to have a third party folder, which I've created. So you can see here, third party, capital T, capital P, no spaces. Inside there is a new folder I made called source SRC. And this is the location where we paste the exported code from Rainbow. So super easy. Let's move back to highs. We can see here's the project I've created to prep. So this project just really has a waveform generator. I've made a couple of dials here. You can see on the right for cutoff resonance and envelope. So once we've created a project we want to load it into in highs, we're going to go to the tools drop down menu and create C++ template for Rainbow Patch. Now because the file has been copied over successfully into the right location, Highs automatically sees it. So we can select our diode CPP, which has been exported from Rainbow. This is gonna be a stereo device. We need to make sure our channel amount is set to two. So the previous videos I made about this, we always worked with the polyphony disabled, but now we can actually enable the polyphony. This will allow Highs to allow us to utilize these filters with true polyphony. So let's press OK, and we see that we're going to create our file here, and we now need to export the DLL. So once we've created this, we can visit the export menu, compile DSP networks as DLL, and we'll see we've got our diode, it shows up in the list, it's fully polyphonic. We'll press OK, launch the script, and Highs will compile our code for us. So it's gonna take a while, we'll come back when this is finished. So our compilation was successful, a quick terminal that launched the script, I've rebooted highs and I've loaded back into the project in highs that we're gonna use with our poly diode filter. So the module tree now, I've got my waveform generator and under the effects section, I'm gonna add in a hard-coded polyphonic effects. And we can see inside that object, we now have access to our diode filter from the DDL export from Rainbow. So what's interesting here is we've now got two modulation slots, P1, P2 modulation. So this is because of Christoph's update to the development branch. For this to work, we need to use the preprocessor definitions, num hardcoded poly effects mods equals two or six or eight. You might be familiar with the number of hardcoded effects mods. This is the new version for the poly effects. For this to work, you're gonna to have to use this preprocessor definition so you have to add these preprocessor definitions into the original Juice project and rebuild highs. And also to use them in your VST export from your highs project, include them into the settings for your project. So these are all in here now, which is why we can see P1 and P2 modulation showing up. So let's go into the P1 modulation and we're gonna add an envelope, a HDSR. So now we've got ourselves a little envelope here. Let's come into the envelope and we'll have a quick demo of how these sound. But to make it really noticeable with our envelope depth, we can move over to a very long attack time. So for example, in my code, once I compile it, we'll be able to see that we've actually got some mapping and scripting here to control various aspects of our device. We've got a cut off frequency and our resonance. And we've also got pre-prepared over here an envelope depth amount for polyphonic envelope modulation. Let's have a listen to how these sound. So there's a diode filter inside highs. Let's kick over to our ADSR modulation source, increase the envelope amount, and let's, let's trigger polyphony. So you can hear each of those three notes I triggered had an independent filter sweep modulating the cutoff via the envelope parameters. So there you go, polyphonic filters using zero delay feedback and a diode emulation from Gen, Rainbow, Maximus P and Highs. So once again, thanks to Christoph for allowing this functionality, it's amazing. And hopefully you can explore some more zero delay feedback circuits you can find online, for example, in the Cycling74 forum and see if you're a Max user, get those through to Rainbow and Gen. 
So we do need to have a license for Rainbow to use this. It's an additional cost on top of Max. You do also need to recompile highs with the pre-processed definitions. But if you have any questions or anything, shout out, happy to help out. Until next time, have fun.